And the unifying thing for this class is that the ossicles, which you'll remember are the little bony uh, bits that act as uh, echinoderm skeleton, are fused together so they don't have that muscle connective tissue um, spacer that we talked about in other classes of echinoderms. They're actually fused together into uh, the classic urchin shell, which is called a test. And that has a series of alternating ambulacral areas and interambulacral areas. Okay. If you remember the term ambulatory, like we were talking about before, the uh, ambulacral groove, these ones have exactly the same thing. You can see in this image the um, holes, and that's where the two feet come out, just like the ambulacral groove in the um, asteroidian had the um, two feet coming out, so do these. But they have to have holes in order to uh, be able to um, come through that solid test. Okay, and the interambulacral areas, or the interambulacral plates, that's between the ambula ambulacral plates. So those are the areas with the big bumps. Okay, the madreporite is one of the ossicles that you can see very well on the what's called the periproct. And that is often gone you, when you look at a urchin test. Usually this bit is gone. But you can see the individual ossicles and the white suture lines, the lines between the um, ossicles where they're fused together. One of those acts as the madreporite. It looks like a sieve when you look very closely at it. And of course, if they have a madreporite, you know that that means they have a water vascular system. And tube feet also say they have a water vascular system. So. Mostly they're radially symmetrical, and uh, they're pentamerous radial symmetry. They show pentamerous radial symmetry like we saw with the starfish, and some have bilateral symmetry, but it's secondary. So they've evolved from pentamerous radial symmetry into a directional movement, giving them bilateral symmetry. So here we go. You can see, just like a starfish, on the, the pentamerous radial symmetry of an urchin test. And you can see the secondary bilateral symmetry of a heart urchin. Now, you can still see the area where the um, uh, tube feet come out, come out, and those are ambulacral areas. And those, um, which we'll see a little bit later, are the tube feet are more specialized into respiratory organs rather than uh, for movement, but you can see very clearly how these things are related and they still come from that pentamerous uh, ancestor. Um, the plates on the interambulacral areas have lots of spines and those are attached to what are called tubercles, which are the bumps on the surface of the test. When you pick up an urchin shell it's bumpy, and those are the tubercle, tubercles. And the spines usually have barbs and might have poison sacs used for defense. And sometimes the spines are used for locomotion, so they walk using their spines. Here's a close-up of the uh, spine. You can see on the left image a tubercle, and the spine above it the interesting thing about these things is they're, uh, why do you not find the spines attached to dead urchin shells, uh, which you generally don't unless they've just recently died? It's because they, they're they actually connected only by the connective tissue and the musculature uh, that holds them to the test. Uh, and that's all soft tissue that will rot away. Um, it's very much like a ball and socket joint, the uh, tubercle and the spine. Uh, and you'll see the poison sac on the right-hand side. Not all 
um, echinoderms. Not all uh, urchins have poison sacs. Okay, so here's another um, view of what uh, on the surface of a um, sea urchin, and you can look at the um, uh, the imp the um, sorry the tube foot or the podia sticking out with the um, ampulla at the bottom, just like any regular water vascular system, any other tube foot. Okay, and they these ones also have pedicillaria, much like the asteroidians. Uh, the figure on the right shows the um, a close up of a diadema urchin spine, and you can see that the um, the spines, the small spines that make up the the lar the larger unit of a spine, all point towards the outside. So this shows that it's a defensive weapon. It's actually meant to stop things from coming and attacking the urchin rather than holding them, which a barb would do if it was facing the opposite direction. So um, the urchin is trying to keep predators at bay. Uh, here is a overhead and underside view of the um, the urchin test and you can see the five-sided makeup of the teeth of the Aristotle's lantern which we'll look at in just a moment you can see there are five teeth and they all come together in that pentamerous fashion uh, surrounding the mouth are specialized organs called buccal podia which we'll look at in sea cucumbers uh, in greater detail and the buccal podia are specialized for feeding. All right, irregular urchins, like um, heart urchins, is another name for them, are um, covered with lots of small spines. They don't use them uh, for defense because they don't live on the surface. They tend to burrow and the um, the small spines are covered, or sorry, they look, they are used for burrowing and movement, and so their defense is to be invisible. You'll often find these tests at Pilot Bay, and they're very fragile. Okay, so here is a picture of a larger asymmetrical urchin alive with its spines that look uh, sort of furry. Okay, and on the top surface, they've got a petal-like pattern uh, in the ambulacral area, and those, um, the podia that come out the two feet, rather than being used for movement, are adapted for respiration. Okay, so here is a picture of one going through the, um, through the substrate with the anterior dorsal podia, those are the tube feet, coming out to be um, spe and specialized for um, respiration. And you can see, especially on the one on the right, the petaloid, which are the anterior ambulacral areas, and the secondary bilateral symmetry. Here is a um, micrograph of sand dollar spines, and you can see how these are not adapted for defense as they are club-shaped, blunt, but very good for grip. So these are good used for moving through the substrate. The um, uh, what do you go? The uh, tube feet on the oral surface of a sand dollar um, you can see are used for picking up um, a any, pretty much any organic material that is within that sand or on top of it that is settled out of the water column and much like the um, uh, the feather stars and the uh, brittle stars they have a mucus covered bolus of food 
that is passed down by the tube feet down these grooves into the mouth. Um, generally, in terms of feeding, they are grazers of algae, but also um, are uh, can be non-selective or selective deposit feeders. Uh, the ones, uh, most of them have an Aristotle's lantern, which um, is a five-toothed apparatus, and the teeth continuously grow, much like a like a chipmunk, and um, they come together at the point and nip off uh, seaweed, or they can be used to crush um, uh, other bits of organic material into bite-sized chunks. So sometimes these things will actually um, be seen to scavenge on dead, uh, dead um, animal matter. Uh, this URL is a very good animation of how a sea urchin um, Aristotle's lantern works. You can see from the internal anatomy, which we'll look at in lab, that they have a very, very long um, intestinal tract, which is typical of organisms that eat um, algae or plant material. Plant material with their cell walls takes a lot longer time to break down than animal material, and carnivores will have usually a very much shorter intestinal tract than, um, than uh, plant eaters. In terms of reproduction, reproduction, they are either male or female. Uh, most will broadcast spawn, and the larva will swim for several months, be months before uh, developing plates, and when they develop plates, they become heavy, they sink to the bottom, and as we said before, all echinoderm adults are uh, benthic. Generally, uh, echinoid uh, echinoidea, sorry, do not live in um, rough, high-energy environments. But this uh, image is just to show you an interesting exception. These ones actually secrete a um, a uh, type of enzyme that will dissolve rock, and so they can uh, live in uh, very wave. Uh, high wave energy environments and in those environments lots and lots of um, algae drifts around which they'll catch and then move to their um, move to their mouths and then uh, wind up ingesting it but they stay in one place and they have a bit of a, uh, a burrow in the rock and the large purple urchins that you'll see out at uh, for example Tuhua or the outer reefs are this type of um, urchin and if you ever try to pry one out you'll find that they're very well uh, stuck into their their burrow or their little groove in the rocks 